This week, Adam is in Lombardy, Milan, Italy's second largest city. It's the economic powerhouse for this nation without any doubt. Politics and religion is centered out of Rome. However, finance and commerce is based right here. People here are used to the best food and wine from within and beyond the boundaries of Lombardy. This is gonna be fun. Milan is well known for being an elegant and fashionable city. It is known as a bit of a fashion and design mecca for the world. This magnificent Gothic cathedral took nearly six centuries to complete and is the largest cathedral in Italy. As you can see around me, Milan is full of treasures. Tourists come and go, and with the wealth of the city comes their food, quite hip and in trend with the food of the world. But it's the hidden secrets of Lombardy that I want to find out about, and I need to get out of this hustle and bustle and head to the countryside. Adam starts his pilgrimage in Milan and heads to Gorgonzola, then up as far north as Teglio. He tries cheeses that make his toes curl, learns the authentic pizzoccheri recipe, and samples a Nebbiolo wine that grows in a region on the south side of an alpine valley. This is my pilgrimage. Come share the journey with me. Lombardi produced some fantastic cheeses and these cheeses are used throughout many different types of pasta dishes in the area. From the aromatic smell of Gorgonzola, one of my all-time favourites, to the next village I'll be visiting where this cheese gets its name from. Coming up, Adam finds Gorgonzola and tries it with an exquisite pasta recipe. Gorgonzola cheese was being made here in the 15th century. There are records of cattle coming down from the Bergamo Valley in the autumn. They utilized the local milk supply and from this bounty, the cheese was made. There are five key elements to making Gorgonzola. Oxygen, time, acidity, temperature and salt. And this is the very first stage where the milk comes into these vats and it's pumped through the pipework over to the pasteurizing area. So the next stage is the milk comes into this big bowl here where they add the rennet and ferment and allow it to mix for 50 minutes. Now there's two different types of gorgonzolas, being your dolce and picante. The difference with picante, they add double the amount of rennet and cultures into the milk, which forms hard cheese curds for your picante gorgonzola. So right behind me you can see the guys are adding the cheese into the baskets by hand and they're treating it like a baby which is a very neat process. It comes into this hot room about 21 degrees where it rests for 8 hours and it shreds a little bit of its weight and the DOC label is printed into the cheese which guarantees quality. It's around 20 degrees in this room when the cheese enters and salt gets added around the sides of the cheese and also on top. And what this does, it helps form the skin to our gorgonzola. From the milk arriving to this final stage here in this chilly cold room around four degrees, it's about 90 days for the dolce and 120 for the picante. Now walking around this factory, seeing all the sights and smelling this cheese, I can't wait to dig into some dolce. Mm. Really big on the palate, nice and creamy. And that's picante. Still creamy and rich, but really sharp and tannins on the palate. 
I know which one I love the most. With my knowledge on how gorgonzola is made, I want to know a local pasta dish using gorgonzola. And I have Chef Piero and his daughter Paola here to show me a great dish. Ciao. Ciao. So what's our dish today? What are we going to be making? Penne with gorgonzola and uh, pepperoni. Pepperoni, so peppers, red peppers. All right, so in with the penne. So we're adding some leeks into the pen also. This will be interesting. So just sweat off the, the leeks for a little bit? Yeah, just a little bit. And put it on. We can cure this. So just add all of it into there? Yeah, you just put it inside. Let me see. <laughs> okay. Add it into here. Okay. Oh, look at this. Picante. How much, chef? <laughs> Tutto. Tutto. Oh, that's okay. a good amount of gorgonzola to the pasta. Okay. Have a look at that. Pepper sauce around the outside, the penne with the gorgonzola sauce just coating it, the crunch of the walnuts. Mm. If you don't mind, can I dig in? Because I seriously can't wait to try this. Mm. The peppers have taken on this sweetness with the leeks. Still got a little bit of acidity to it. Then the gorgonzola's creamy. And then my favorite part of the dish yeah. is the walnuts. The crunchy sweet walnuts on top and the perfectly cooked penne. Piero. Grazie. 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 Coming up after the break is a recipe from the alpine slopes of the Valtellina, Pizzoccheri. Telio is perched on a large terrace, 850 metres above sea level. There is a very unique ingredient that's grown in this area, and it's buckwheat. So I understand from the buckwheat they created a pasta dish, and a very unique pasta dish. So here it is, pizzoccheri. About a centimetre thick, six centimetres long, looking like more like a noodle, quite soft, but you know, quite coarse texture as well. Uh, first of all, we need to put uh, the potatoes and the cabbage. Okay. Because they take a uh, longer time to cook. Okay, and this is salted boiling water? Yes. Fantastic. So we, how long do we cook the potatoes for, around about? By five or six minutes. Okay, and cabbage as well? Yes. So this dish is cooked all in the one pot? Yes. The pasta, the Together. cabbage, the potatoes, yes, yes, everything. Yes. To mix the flavours uh, in the end of the product. This is the type of dish that I like. So Simone, do you make pizzoccheri with any other sauces like nap sauce or no, meat sauce? No, 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 no. Only with this uh, original recipe that uh, only with the local products. Yeah. And uh, local cheese and local butter and uh, local cabbage. So no other thing, no, no tomatoes, other. no nothing. So only the tradition these says only these yes, ingredients yes, make yes. pizzoccheri with. If you want uh, with tomato, you make spaghetti. <laughs> okay. The important thing is yes. to separate the pizzoccheri when you put in the water. Then just gently mixing it through. Yes. Okay, so all the flavour from the cabbage and potatoes now is going to go into the pasta, yes? yes? The, uh, it's important to cook it together, everything together, and not separately. Never separate? No, never. We start drain so little you remove by little. It. Yeah. So the potatoes are still holding their shape. The cabbage is obviously nice and soft. It's important to drain very well. Yeah? Yes. And we start to make layers. So you're making layers like a lasagna? Yes, exactly. Very then we can put some casero cheese. Uh -huh. No parmesan yet? Some parmesan. Perfect. And wow. then another layer. Okay. So you're laying the pasta up with the heat, the cheese will obviously melt. Yes. You get a nice gooey center. Perfect. 
Now we have to finish uh, this dish with uh, some butter and garlic. Butter and garlic? Yes, we can finish the dish. So this doesn't go into the oven at all? No, 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 no. no it's finished like that. That's it. Well, enough talking, time yes. to try it. Mm. You know what, Simone? I understand why you don't change this dish. Using all those ingredients, that butter at the end, it is just fantastic. Okay. Gracias, Simone, for teaching this very local and special pasta dish. It was a pleasure. The valley behind me was once known in the ancient Roman times as the Valley of Teglio, but today Valtellina produces some exceptional wine, grown and produced in a very interesting manner. And I have Graziano, who's going to explain a whole lot more about it to me. Ciao. Ciao, piacere. Piacere. Now, Graziano, tell me a little bit about this beautiful area. It's actually one of the longest valleys of the Wool uh, Alp. Really? Uh, really? And it's disposed from east to west, so uh, it has a beautiful. Uh, Sun exposition, actually. Yeah, very nice. And I noticed this because all the grapes, correct me if I'm wrong, are grown on the north side. Exactly. North, north side, which is actually sunny, sun uh, facing, so yeah. south facing, which is the warmest part of the valley. Can you tell me about the variety of grape that's grown throughout the valley? Well, actually, the major variety of the, of the grape in the valley is Nebbiolo, which is almost 95%. Wow. And you know, locally, in dialect, it's called Chavenasca. Can we try some? You're getting me very I uh, think we <laughs> salivating. Have to try it. <laughs> Let me open a bottle for you. Mm. It's a nice granite color. I hope you're going to enjoy it. You see, the, the smell is very fruity, oh. very uh, wow. uh, round. It is. But it in the taste is very uh, young, very fresh. It is. And that's it's why it's a wine that... Uh, great with any food. You, yeah. Can't wait to try the next one. Yeah, let's see uh, how it tastes. You know, enjoying wine, it's a question of senses. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to look to a wine. The wine, it must be really nice and brilliant and uh, make you willing to drink it. Okay, and, and the then, next one? Of course, you have to smell it. True. And the fruit of a wine can be very uh, interesting. And of course, uh, on Let the Let me plate. guess. Oh, you get to taste it, yeah? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> As you can see, it's called Sforzato di Valtellina. It's very intense, dry, mm. and very alcoholic, 15%. Well, let's try it. Enjoy. It's actually a wine that you drink at the end of a meal mm. because the aftertaste is fruity and very enjoyable yeah. and lasts very long. But through this wine, it helps the general meaning of the expression in vino veritas, vino veritas. which means through the wine, the hearts open up and uh, people get more true. So the true <laughs> of the veritas. So you the can more find it in the wine. You relax, you enjoy wine, food, and company. Yeah, that's life. And life is good. Viva. Salute. Don't go away. Adam finds more cheese to cook with. In the 10th century, the locals of this mountainous area began producing a soft cheese with cow's milk that they had left over. It was only produced during certain months of the year and left to mature in the nearby caves. <laughs> yeah. I really enjoyed learning how to make the gorgonzola, but the region of Lombardia has another iconic cheese, Taleggio. Tell me about the ageing process of the Taleggio. Uh, our aging process is very unique mm -hmm. because we age underground in a, in a traditional way. Okay. In a very special environment because uh, we recreate the ancient caves 
uh, with natural materials, very similar to the rock, okay. the concrete. And so for how many days do you age it in this uh, environment? Generally the minimum is 35 days, mm. but uh, uh, we prefer age it for 50 days. Wow. And there's three different types in front of us. Yeah, we have uh, a pasteurized one, mm -hmm. the uh, raw milk one, yeah. and uh, uh, the ancient alleggio, the stracchino. The ancient. Ancient, yeah. Why is it ancient? Because uh, uh, in the past uh, we make the taleggio in this way. Stracchino means uh, uh, tired milk. <laughs> because uh, uh, they make the taleggio when mm. uh, uh, the cow are very tired. Because mm. during the summer we take the, our cows and uh, uh, we bring them in the top of the mountain. All the way up there? Yeah, in the top. Yeah. And uh, the cow are very tired <laughs> because they have walk a lot uh, yeah, yeah, along definitely. the mountain. <laughs> it's very unique taste actually, that little bit of a skin yeah, yeah. from the cheese, but then it's still inside is nice and soft and tasty. Because the traditional is uh, made with raw milk mm. and without lactic starter. Ah. Without nothing, it's just milk, and That's so the tradition. texture is very different. Okay, and the next one we have is is the raw milk. Ah. Here in wow. Valtaleggio, we make the taleggio with raw milk. Ooh, that looks good. Nobody make it with raw milk. No one. No one. Uh, uh, that's just here in Valtaleggio. So truly unique to this area. Yeah, but uh, because if you use the raw milk, the taste and the flavor change a lot. The pasteurized one is mm. good, but is flat. All right, I'll try. That raw milk. You see also the texture is very different. It's yeah, more creamy. Definitely. Mm. Still creamy, but for me, I think the raw milk is the one. It's yeah. really full in flavor. That, you know, that rawness, almost like coming from the earth here, from the cow, that's yeah. unique. Because you can feel the herbs that the cow eats during the day. That's the one, that's yeah. exactly right. Thank you, Daddy, for all this fantastic cheese. With all this knowledge from Gorgonzola and Taleggio, I think it's going to help me with my final cook a little later on. This next recipe is a tribute to Chef Simone's Pizzoccheri because I'm using buckwheat pasta and also Chef Piero because I'm going to pinch his walnuts from that dish. It was fantastic. I'm making buckwheat spiral pasta with Taleggio, Gorgonzola and my favourite spinach. For the full list of ingredients and method, visit Adam's Pasta Pilgrimage. To start this recipe, we need to take our buckwheat pasta and add it into our boiling water, pinch of salt. There it goes. Give that a little stir. It's going to take about six to eight minutes. So in that time, we're going to make our sauce. We need to prepare our spinach. My nonna always used to make me spinach and you know, she gave it to me because she's like Popeye, you know, get that greens in me, ah. So I'm adding it to my dish with all that beautiful richness of taleggio and gorgonzola. So help getting your little bit of greens into this pasta dish. And then we're just gonna chop this up. There we go. Now, spinach loves butter. So don't be shy. And a splash of olive oil just to stop it from burning the butter and in with the spinach. Bring the heat up a little bit, just to saute that away. Don't forget about your spirals in here, the buckwheat spirals. Take a little bit of that pasta water, add it to your spinach, will just help wilt it down. Just a small pinch of salt to our spinach. A little cracked pepper. Let's check our pasta. Nice and al dente. Straight into that spinach. If your spinach is reduced too much, just add a little bit of pasta water. Taleggio, you know, it's one of those unique cheeses. It has a quite distinctive smell to it. I consider it to be like stinky socks. Now, that may turn you off from this cheese, but seriously, give it a go. It's a great cheese and it's really creamy. Grabbing your taleggio, just chopping it into little pieces. Straight into the pan. And my gorgonzola. Oh, look at that. Those beautiful blue veins running through the cheese. Just a little bit more gorgonzola because I don't think I ate enough when I visited the factory, you know. <laughs> I think by the end of the day, being there, it started coming out of my ears. 
Add some more cracked pepper. Mix through. Look at that. Look at the beautiful Telejon Gorgonzola. Just come all nice and oozy. Cling to our buckwheat spirals. Now, just like Piero, I'm pinching this idea. Just some fresh walnuts over the top for crunch. All there's left to do is try some. I get a big hint of the telejo, the sharpness of the gorgonzola. My greens in there, my spinach, my nonna will be happy. The crunch from our walnuts, and who can not forget about the buckwheat pasta. I think Piero and Simone would be very proud of this dish. On his journey, Adam has travelled south to Sicily and Naples, oh, where commercial pasta makers started drying spaghetti and selling it to other regions of Italy over 850 years ago. He has stood in some of the oldest dwellings known to humanity and seen the richness of thinking, culture and food in Bologna. Adam has met so many wonderful people from the Tuscan plains and the Umbrian hills to the streets of Rome. There is no doubt that pasta is directly linked to Italian culture and every time we use pasta, we build on that culture. So I guess we need to keep exploring pasta and perhaps we all need to take up a daily pasta pilgrimage. For this episode's recipes, stories and more, visit Adam's Pasta Pilgrimage 